Hey guys. So we know that over the last, you know, several days, there's been a lot of conversation about a certain old person, <laughs> an old infirm person uh, who had a really bad debate last week. You know, we've all had these conversations. Everybody's group chats are blowing up about it. All the op-ed pages, the New York Times is telling everybody what to do. All the op-ed, all the smart people are writing think pieces and such about what should be done next as far as the candidates are concerned all, all on the ballot. Well, today the Supreme Court just made all of that completely irrelevant because the Leonard Leo's hand-picked six, the Federalist Society six, the Leonard Leo six on the court, just declared days before this nation celebrates its independence, presumably from the British King, that the President of the United States and a former President of the United States, that they are a king. They have granted monarch-like powers to Donald Trump and declared him immune from prosecution for any acts that he can be declared official acts. So any acts that he conducts as president and said that any acts he conducts as president, which may have resulted in crimes, must be presumed to be official acts if they are done through the purview of the presidency. And he is only not immune from strictly personal acts. What that means in regular people terms is that as long as Donald Trump used the apparatuses of the presidency, he can kind of do anything. So when he ordered his Justice Department or tried to pressure his Justice Department and threatened to install different people in the Justice Department to come up with fake evidence of voter fraud so that he could declare the elections in Michigan and Pennsylvania and Arizona and Georgia to have been invalid, he can do that. And all the communications that he had with the Justice Department, even if they were criminal in nature, are immune from prosecution and cannot be used by prosecutors, by Jack Smith and others. He can do it because he used the official instruments of the presidency. When he tried to pressure Mike Pence, including using a violent insurrection to pressure him, to accept fake electors instead of the real ones, the Biden ones, to accept the, uh, the electors of himself and Donald Trump instead. As long as he used the official apparatuses of the presidency to do it, he can do it. Presumably, if he were to use SEAL Team 6 to try to assassinate one of his political opponents, so long as he did it through the auspices of the presidency, let's say use the NSA to say, let me investigate the Bidens as a national security threat. And then we need to go ahead and assassinate them when they take a foreign trip. We'll just go ahead and use drones to assassinate them, let's say in a foreign country. Uh, and we'll use SEAL Team 6 to go in and get them like they got Bin Laden. As long as you use it, do it through the official apparatuses of the presidency, he can do it. He can do anything. When you're president, they let you do it. <laughs> That's what they just ruled today, including two members of the court whose wives are insurrectionists. They did not recuse from that case. Clarence Thomas and Alito ruled in that case in which John Roberts wrote the majority opinion. Let me read you what Sonia Sotomayor wrote for the three liberal justices, really the only justices that actually care about the Constitution. This is what she wrote in dissent. Never in the history of our republic has a president had reason to believe that he would be immune from criminal prosecution if he used the trappings of his office to violate the criminal law. Moving forward, however, all former presidents will be cloaked in such immunity. If the occupant of that office misuses official power for personal gain, the criminal law that the rest of us must abide will now, I mean, will not provide a backstop, will not provide a backstop. And then she added something that's never been included in a Supreme Court dissent that anyone can think of, even Plessy, none of them. With fear for our democracy, I dissent. This is DEFCON 1, friends. This lady has fear for our democracy because of the six other people on that court who care not about democracy, who have essentially said on the eve of the celebration of July 4th, Independence Day, that we do have a king, that our president is in effect a king, and that as long as they use the apparatuses of government, and this is on the heels of them saying that bribes are legal, because remember, what Donald Trump's argument was was that the only, the only thing you can do, the only recourse if a president commits a crime is that you have to impeach them and convict them, which has never happened, a conviction. You know what you impeach people for? Treason and bribery 
and other high crimes and misdemeanors. Treason, which generally would mean trying to overthrow the government, they've taken that off the table. Bribery, well, they just previously took bribery off the table because they said as long as you pay the bribe after the acts are done by the public official, the elected official should not get paid in advance. They should just get paid after they do what you want. That's a gratuity, not a bribe. So they've taken bribery off the table. So who gonna check them, boo? How are you gonna impeach a president for treason and bribery when they just said treason is legal as long as you use the apparatuses of the presidency to commit said treason? And bribery is legal because all you have to do is call it a gratuity. So they've taken off the table the only other thing that the Trump lawyer said you could do to a president if they commit crimes. So essentially, the presidency is now officially above the law. Well, who wouldn't want that job? Because you're a king on the eve of Independence Day. That's what they just did. This election is no longer about the old guy that's in the White House now. Like, you know, all the op-ed pay pages and the New York Times can run around and, and opine about, you know, what Joe Biden should do. And, you know, y'all have fun with that. Enjoy yourselves, intellectual thought leaders. I no longer care. Doesn't matter to me anymore. It's above me now. It's above me now. There's a Waffle House next door. There's a Best Western next door as well. It's above me now. It's above Joe Biden now. Don't care about Joe Biden's age, infirmity, that he shuffle when he walk. I don't care. He could be seated for the rest of, from now to election day and never get up off a chair. He could sit down. He could roll around in a, in a wheelchair. He could be on a skateboard, seated. I don't care. Donald John Trump cannot be allowed back into the White House because if you combine that madman with this court, two of whose members are insurrectionists, who flew, one of whom flew an upside-down flag at his home and blamed it on his wife, who's also crazy, the other of whom's wife literally was part of the insurrection, and they ruled in this, they, they put themselves in the Leonard Leo VI, they went ahead and, and ruled on this with no shame. You combine this court, two of whose members are going to immediately resign and put 30-year-olds in there, including probably the guy who wrote the opinion in the Beater's case, meaning that Beater should be able to get machine guns, which, by the way, they have now arrogated to themselves the power to decide all federal rules, everything, whether your plane that you fly in is safe, how much carbon can be in the atmosphere, how much filth can be in your water. They, they said agencies that have experts can't decide that. They will decide that. So they are kings, and Trump is king. You put him in the White House, combined with this court, and a Republican House and Senate, we're done, y'all. All the rights that were won in the 20th century, the hard-earned rights of women, uh, laborers, workers, the rights of, of ch children. Remember, child labor used to be legal. The rights of black folks, forget that. The rights of non-white immigrants, forget that. All of the 20th century, they are trying to, they are trying to repeal the entire 20th century, and they're doing it fast. Between them and these crazy Republican governors, they are repealing the American century, the 20th century, because they don't like it and they want back the 19th century. The century when super rich white men, unchecked and untaxed, amassed great wealth, passed it down with no taxation to their descendants and pretended that they had earned it on their own, that they were just masters of the universe. They want that era back. They think that the 20th century was an abomination and they are dismantling it. They're coming for every single one of our rights. They're not done. They're not done. If you love having your freedom, having the freedom for contraception, LGBTQ rights, that's going too. If you don't think they're coming for Obergefell, if you don't think they're coming for all these rights, then you are delusional. They're coming for all of it. They're dismantling the 20th century. They are repealing the 20th century. This ain't about Joe Biden anymore, y'all. It ain't about his policies. There are a lot of them I disagree with. There's a lot of them I disagree with deeply, deeply, morally. But it's not, it's above me now. It's above him now. You cannot allow Republicans to control the White House, the House, and the Senate, and the Supreme Court, and all of these states. You're now voting for your life. You must vote. Listen to Taraji P. Henson, y'all, Project 2025. They've now just implemented it from the court. You don't even need it now. You have this court, plus Trump, plus the House, plus the Senate, plus all these states. Y'all better vote for your lives in November. I'm gone. Y'all be good. And God, good luck and God bless. For real, for real.